To start out today, we're going to talk about how to set up another artboard for your next page. Our next page is going to be titled Shape. Let's make a full page view. To do that, you double click the hand tool and you can see that I can see the whole page. Select the selection tool and let's figure out the artboards. Over here you'll find the icon artboards in the floating palette right underneath layers and just click this little icon at the bottom and you'll see that it creates a new artboard. This is an entirely new page and you can organize your work this way when you uh, are creating your own work. But we're going to title it again. Right now my guides are hidden so I right click in the gray area and you see they pop back up. My horizontal line goes all the way across so I don't need another horizontal line but I do need my vertical lines at the half inch. And again the reason why we're doing these is to keep it organized. So drag across from the vertical ruler at the half inch mark and don't put anything outside that space when you're making your shapes today. Now we're going to get our line, drag it across our guide, hold down shift to keep it from being not straight, and type the word shape on the guide. Go ahead and change the font and make the size 36 point and then move it down to be on the line. Now we're going to start working with shapes. I'm going to start with geometric shapes. So if you find your type tool again, type geometric and go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. Somewhere around 24 looks good. That way we can tell the difference between our title and our subtitle. The shapes are underneath the type tool. If you click and hold on that, then you will find a range of different shapes. We're going to start with the rectangle tool and start making some rectangles. So I can make this rectangle any shape I want by clicking and dragging. If I hold down shift while I click and drag, I make a perfect square. And you can play around with the next tool, the rounded rectangle tool. It's very similar. I can make a rectangle, or if I hold down shift, I make a square with rounded edges. And going down with the ellipse tool, very similar. I make ellipses, or if I hold shift, I make a circle. The next one we're going to talk about is the polygon tool. This one has any kind of polygon that you'd like to draw. Right now it has several sides, but if I click and change the amount of sides, it will change the shape accordingly. Three makes a triangle, and then if I click again, I can change it to four, which would make a square. Continuing to click will help you control how many sides it has. Star tool works in the same way. Right now there are three points and if I change it to five, then I have a five point star. Click again and change it to more. However many I have, that's how many points that my star is going to have. And lastly, the flare tool. It's there and available for you to play with, but I'm not really going to talk about this one. You can mess with it if you want to and see how it kind of reacts with the shapes that are around it, changes the highlights in the actual shape. But like I said, we're not going to mess around with these, so I will just delete them. Now we're going to talk about the stroke and the fill of the shapes you've created. You can change these in the color picker or up in your option bar. If you change a color in your option bar, you need to make sure you have a shape selected. So I've selected my shape and now I'm changing the stroke, which you can't really see right now. So let's zoom in a little bit. And now you can see that stroke. You can change the size by pushing the up arrow next to stroke. This makes the point size larger. 
I can change the fill in either place. Down here in the color picker, I double click, change the color, and click OK. And up here, I have several swatches. I can click one of these swatches if I want to, and it will change the color. Or if I want to make a new color and save that color, I can come down here to the new swatch and play around with these sliders until I find a color that I like. Each one of these represents a different uh, color and we'll talk more about that when we get to the color section. But right now it shows up in that color swatches area and you can save that color if you need it for later. Now I'm going to let you play around with these shapes and make some kind of composition with them. You can change the stroke, you can change the colors, you can leave them all black and white, you can do whatever you want to with them. Make some kind of composition or picture with the shapes that you've got. Add more if you need to, get rid of some, do whatever you want to do. I'll let you watch me as I build mine and I can't wait to see what you come up with. One thing I should mention is that if you want to reorder the things on your page, you can always right click or on a Mac you can press control click and click arrange and then you can change the order of the things on your on your page. So just click bring to front or bring to back or whatever it is you need to do with a specific shape that you're working with. Get rid of any shapes that you don't need, and then let's move on to organic shapes.